I'm gonna tell my opponent, there's a lethal line here. I just need to find it. Hello and welcome everybody. We are back here from match three with the list that you see on screen right in front of you. And we are jamming some Elvish Reclaimer, so I'm pumped to jump in here. And if you are not familiar with the deck list, then you need to check out match one where I cover in detail everything you need to know about this list, where it came from, what it's doing, and I will not be going over that here. So if that's something you're interested in, check out match one. And yeah, let's just jump straight into the games. Alrighty, let's hop in here for the match. I almost said the games. I guess either works. <laughs> Playing against Dreaded Dead. We are on the draw, but we have a double amulet draw. So if we find a bounce land, this hand is quite insane. Mm -hmm. We might even be able to transmute Tolari West by fetching up a breeding pool if we top deck an untapped source, which is interesting. We definitely keep this. Probably just fetching and shocking and playing a turn one amulet, but we'll see. Dreaded Dead cycles a Street Wraith. Could it be Living End, another Street Wraith? This could also be a Death Shadow deck, I do suppose. And they lead on Inquisition, so definitely not Living End. This is probably going to be some sort of black-based Death Shadow deck. See what they take here. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a difficult pick. I mean, we have redundant packs and amulets. Taking an amulet is probably still the best thing here, but um, if they take a Grazer, for example, then we can still pack for Azusa or Dryad and then pack for Titan and just go off the third amulet. I was going to say, and just go off. Um interesting i guess we just need to play this windswept teeth out and hope to draw a bounce land unfortunately is what it is and we will be taking the damage here just to get our amulet in play and i think it is right to play amulet here instead of grazer i don't know that's pretty debatable because we could play a land top deck a simic i guess if we're top decking a simic we probably don't want to transmute it I mean, we can get an amulet discarded and be fine. I actually think that the Grazer is the most unique card in our hand, and I'd rather get the Grazer in play. Now I'm thinking about it, so let's just go ahead and do that, and then next turn we can play however many amulets we have access to. Kind of strange, but um, this represents a blocker, whereas the third amulet is not really that unique. The third amulet is already pretty redundant. We can already win with two amulets pretty easily. Third amulet lets us squadron titan and put as many or as up to three titans in play, basically, since we only have two Tolari Wests, and be able to haste and double strike all of them. But we don't need to do that. On two amulets, we can just get one titan in play and start doing the, the crazy things that way. Well, I mean, there's a land. I guess we're just playing land and all of our amulets. Maybe not even all of them. We're definitely playing at least two of them, I think. So the benefit of playing the third amulet here is that we can top deck any enter the battlefield tap land, like even, I guess it would have to be one that produces green. So like, I guess Vesuva copying breeding pool, for example, and it would untap three times thanks to the three amulets and give us titan mana. However, if our opponent has Croxa, then we have to discard our titan, and I don't really want to play into that. I think it's unlikely that we're going to find a land that we want exactly triple amulet already in play for. On the other hand, if we top deck a bounce land and still wanted to play out the third amulet, we could just play the amulet, then the bounce land, and immediately be able to cast Titan and do the things, so probably fine. I'm going to keep this amulet in hand as a safeguard against Colgan's Command and Croxa, and we'll see if we can top deck the lands that we need. Land or lands. And, hmm, I don't think our opponent is going to have any effect to make a sacrifice Arboreal Grazer. I guess they could have, no, we can they have? They can't have Liliana of the Veil, since they didn't reveal Lurus or anything. Eh, whatever. We'll just take the four. No big deal. It's only four damage. I guess this allows them potentially to Thought see Not Thought see what I'm saying. Fatal Push our Grazer, so we can't block with it later, but... Well, I mean, we have the third amulet still. It's just, uh, you know, chilling out here, hanging out. If we top deck a Bounce Land, we can make six, seven, eight. Which is not quite enough to be able to cast Titan. So we'd have to play the amulet, keep bounce line in hand, and pass it back, and then the turn after we get to play it. Nine total mana, pick up T-West, transmute, titan, and go from there. Dryad. I mean, yeah, we're playing that. Boom. 
pass it back. Yeah, we might not be able to get there this this particular game. I hate to say it. We'll see. Bouncing off the top will now allow us to tighten. I do believe. Let's see. That would be four, eight. Yeah. Plus the three. Yeah. So bounce land now allows us to tighten. And we still get to activate stronghold without having to uh, copy it if we want to. And we'll definitely take this block. Even assuming we just didn't have this amulet, bounce land would let us tighten. With the amulet as well, then it doesn't even matter what color the bounce land is. We play the bounce land, float a bunch of mana, use the dryad ability to float however much blue we need from the bounce land instead of just the two mana, say if it was a sanctuary, and then transmute for a titan, play it, get another Talari West and a bounce land, pick it back up, transmute that, get a second titan, play it, a Suva copy, the stronghold, and Boros, and attack with our whole crew, and that would be good enough. Actually, I think our opponent has left themselves dead to us just hasting our Dryad and attacking them for exactly four damage. Okay, no, they have Gurmag Angler. Okay. That's a bounce land. Let's see. So we play the Amulet. Float four, five, six, seven, and a blue. So that's uh, eight. No, 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 it's going to be six. So we play this, float six, seven, and then play it again, floating blue, and then two more. Yeah, I think we can definitely do all of the things we want to do here. So play out an amulet. Five to make sure we don't have any yields. Play out a sanctuary. This one we can just float all of the natural mana here for. Untap, float, untap, float, untap, float. And we'll pick up the sanctuary one time here. And now we'll play the Sanctuary again, and this one has to pick up the Talari West. And we need to float at least one blue with the Dryad ability off of this Sanctuary. So we'll untap it, and we'll float the blue first. Now we'll untap it again. Float two, untap it. So this is already nine mana, plus the Breeding Pool means that we are good to go here. So we'll float with this, pick up the T-West, transmute it, get a Titan, and uh, things will be good and jolly. So Summoner's Pact. We still have one pack left in deck, so the second TUS is good to go. Play this Titan, leaving the white floating, because why not? We'll get second TUS, I do suppose, and Wrath Chamber. We do have a pack left, so... Yeah, this is just uh, the elementary thing to do. We'll stack our triggers. Carefully not click through the yields here, hopefully. We'll untap. Untap, float, float, untap, untap, float, float. All the things again, float, pick up the T-West, transmute it, get a Summoner's Pact, Pact for a Titan, cast said Titan, leaving white floating. Yep. And we could try to do some Valcut shenanigans, but I'm just going to go the simple route and do Vesuva copying the Stronghold and Boros Garrison, haste all of our creatures that are in play, and just win that way. <laughs> Simplest, perfectly sweet execution. Game two. That was interesting. I don't know how to feel about what just happened in that game. Our opponent's on Delve spells, which makes me like Dismember here. And Path to Exile is obviously going to be fine. I like two grazers, but not more than that, probably. You can side out the reclaimers. They just die to pushes and bolts and stuff. Explosives, obviously great here. Explore, I like, as a way to dig out from underneath our opponent's discard spells, for example. Eldarmu's Call is great. Summoner's Pact is not as great. We can trim the cavern, as our opponent's likely not playing blue. And even if they were, it's for Sovereign Denial, which doesn't hit our Titan anyway, so... Ghost Quarter is, like, debatable. They probably only play, like, two basics, but I'm not really trying to cut them off mana, so I'm going to trim the Ghost Quarter. It puts us down a land to do that as well, so. And we can actually trim... Actually, we don't want to trim Flagstones in this matchup since it does tap for the path and the call, so it's probably fine. Uh, what else? Maybe Dismember is just not that great. I don't know. I'm willing to, sh to give it a shot, though. You could trim one Amulet, even. That's uh, not too crazy, but I think I'm not on that particular plan. We trim a Temple Garden. Nah. Man, I don't know what to cut here. We need to cut three cards. 
I'm over here looking at three explorers like, hmm. I actually think it's disp it's defensible to trim one amulet. Our opponent will have things like abrupt decay to just directly answer it. They'll thought seize us, and we don't want to be we don't want to be keeping hands that rely on amulet, for example. They don't really do much in multiples, as we just saw. We could have had just double amulet and been just fine in that scenario. Um, so I think trimming one amulet's fine. Maybe the second pact, although that's a little it's a little iffy if we end up running out of Tolari West tutor targets, but we'll see how that goes. One more card. Maybe it's just a grazer. I don't love that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just a fetch land. Fetch lands are good with Dryad and Tracker, though, so not really. I guess it's just a Flagstones. It is the worst card, objectively, in our deck, especially without Reclaimer, so. Okay. On the draw. I think maybe we were on the draw in game one, too. This hand is an obvious mulligan. Actually, is it an obvious mulligan? We can't cast any of our spells except for explosives, but explosives is a pretty good spell to be casting. Our opponent could just discard our explosives and leave our hand to do nothing. Natural Bog stops them from Gurmag Anglering us. Natural Valakut to go along with Dryad as well. Talario has to transmute for Bounce Land if we find the blue sources. I don't know. I think it's weak overall. I'm going to mulligan it. Alright, we have a turn one Grazer with a call ready to go. We have some lands. Vesuva to copy. Perhaps a Temple Garden or something. Or maybe a nice land that our opponent plays for us. So I think we definitely keep this. I think the bottom is probably the Titan. Eldarmi's Call practically is a Primeval Titan, but it has the additional utility of finding a Dryad or a... Uh, mainly a Dryad, I guess, because we did board out the um, Reclaimers. Are we just Fetch Shocking Grazer into play? Or are we trying to hold on to Grazer as Discard, discard Fodder? Now, nah, I think we want to get Grazer in play. It lets us turn to Call still, and um, we can pitch the Summoner's Pact if we have to discard something to an effect like Croxa. And we are just going to fetch up the Temple Garden here. Tap for our Eladomri's Call, of course. And yeah. Suva copying Temple Garden incoming. And uh, we will not pay the life. And we'll pass it back. See, this is why I like a few Grazers. They help us get a little speed and get a little chump blocking done or play around Liliana the Veil. But, I mean, this is definitely not a hand that would want a second Arboreal Grazer. That's for sure. And the chump block is definitely worth something. Our opponent has blue. I guess they could have Drown in the Lock, which is something to think about. But, I mean, honestly, we play around Drown in the Lock pretty well by just not ever putting cards into our graveyard ourselves. So, 1-1 one, one Shadow. Huh. I wish we had any way to make them gain life, but we don't. We can call for something and then play Growth Chamber and pick up the Vesuva. That plays into them having a Cleansing Wildfire. Now, let's just play the Valkut and pass and call during their turn at some point in time. I guess we're technically playing into Stubborn Denial this way, but... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I can't, I can't think about everything. Our opponent is probably likely to use this turn to make some more threats. Although, to be honest, they already have Shadow in place, so I don't know if that's even entirely true. There's nothing else that we could have done, though. Definitely making them tap the mana during their turn is going to be more effective for us. Thought Scour. They're milling themselves. Yep, makes sense. They do play Gurmag Angler. Okay, they go to combat. I think I'm inclined to just go ahead and take this Chump Block. We can't play da uh, play around um, Team or Battle Rage down the line, so blocking now preserves us some life. It gives us an additional turn, maybe. I guess it also means that if they have... Uh, are we supposed to call here? I think that maybe we're not, because if we call for a Dryad and they take it, then we're less likely to top deck a 3-drop to play, so I actually think we're supposed to let this resolve. Which is kind of strange. Um, but what was I saying? Yeah, they could potentially play a uh, Scourge of the Skyclaves here. And uh, keeping our life total high means that we have extra turns against Scourge as well. So, is it Scourge or Scourge? What do you say? Let me know in the comments. I 
Let's see what our opponent takes here. I assume they have to take the call, right? If we top deck a Dryad, we had a little extra help at being able to do that because we didn't cast Elodomi's call here. I guess we could have called for a Titan. Eh, I don't know if that's something that I would have wanted to do. I mean, they're practically forced to take call here, though, so. It's definitely better than taking Summoner's Pact. I think they're just trying to think through what the reasoning would be not to cast call there. That would be my assumption. Or maybe they're noting the contents of our hand, although, I mean, MTG shows them that. MTGO, I should say. So. Another discard spell, perhaps? Thoughtseize? That would be kind of annoying. I would still probably just immediately slam the Summoner's Pack for um, Dryad and then play out a bunch, a bunch of land drops. Maybe try to kill our opponent with Valkut at that point? I don't know. We'd have a long way to go. This feels like a game that's going to be hard for us to win. I guess unless we draw a path slash engineer explosives, in which case we have more time than we think. Very curious our opponent's on Street Wraith and no Lurus. I guess that makes their shadow draws a little faster. Hmm. And they're playing Tarmogoyf, but presumably no Mistress Bobble as well, so. Angler. Yeah, that one's kind of annoying. Well, I mean, we have lands. We can pack for... Dryad, chump block with it, pay for Pact, and then on the turn after we pay for Pact, we can slam Titan and get Colony Garden and Radiant Fountain and just pray that it's good enough. We don't really have another choice. All right, so let's play out our Bounce Land here and float some mana in response to the trigger. We're playing land first here because, I mean, our opponent doesn't have any mana up, but if they had the ability to potentially cast some interactive spell here, like a Fatal Push or Dismember or whatever, then Having already played a land drop means that we're guaranteed to get our second land drop value from Dryad here. And we can go ahead and play Vesuva copying this Simic. And pick up, I guess, just Temple Garden. If they Cleansing Wildfire us, we'll still be able to pay for pack regardless. So we don't really care about that. Yeah, I mean, if they have Team of Battle Rage, we're in bad shape. If they have a removal spell for Dryad, we're in bad shape. If not just dead, that would be 18 over two turns. So we'd actually just be dead to remove a spell on Dryad, assuming we don't draw Path, I guess, would be the card that would stop us from dying to that. It would have to be Path exactly. I also think we're probably not supposed to block with Dryad here. No, maybe we are. Maybe we are supposed to block with Dryad. I'm not sure. It helps us play around that removal spell by just cashing in our Dryad for some life instead to make sure that we are as likely as possible to actually get to cast this Titan that's in our hand. So it probably would be correct to block with a Dryad, I think. I don't think our opponent's going to give us the option, unless they just have TBR here, in which case we're just dead, because they're tapping this Blood Crypt, and they Fetch Shock for it. Probably is a TBR, and uh, that's probably fine. We'd be taking 14. I guess we could chump the Gurmag and draw exactly Path. Take 14 down to 5. No, even that would not be enough. We're definitely supposed to chump block here, I think. If they have TBR, it probably doesn't matter. Snap. Inquisition? That doesn't do anything. I guess it presents lethal. Let's see. That's 14. Yeah, that's lethal. We'd have to top deck exactly path here. Exactly... Path to Exile deck. That is that is what we're asking. It's very reasonable, I would say. Not Path to Exile. You got it. <laughs> okay, we were not anticipating on winning that game, even though we were doing everything we could to play to our outs. Okay, so... Hmm. Maybe we're not supposed to be boarding out the fourth amulet here. I, I don't feel super amazing about boarding it out. Like, I feel like having it let our lands untapped allow us to kind of keep up with the speed of what our opponent's doing. So I think Dismember is defensible since they do have the um, Delve guys. 
Let's see. I guess we could continue continue to trim on flagstones. We have one flagstone, three sanctuaries, three temple gardens, two fetch lands. So that's seven, eight, nine sources of white mana, or plus the garrison, and also Dryad allows us to tap for white, so we might be fine on the paths. Yeah, I think I'm going to run it this way. At least we get to be on the play this time, which is quite a boon, I would say. This is definitely a matchup where you want to be on the play for game three. Hmm. We have a hand that doesn't play anything until turn three. Has Titan mana. And it has both Tracker and Dryad. Tracker is quite a good threat, but if they have a discard spell, this hand is questionable. Turn three, Dryad. Let's see, if we play Polari West, Vesuva Copy something, Temple Garden Shock, play Sanctuary, pick up Temple Garden, then we do have two untapped sources for the turn four Titan. Assuming that we even get to put Dryad in play at all, and it doesn't die. Not super great assumptions here. Hmm, I think this one's close. I think it's close. We are on the play, which gives us the option of mulliganing into Amulet so that we can play it before our opponent gets to discard spell us and hope that they don't have something to answer it, which is reasonable. So we could try to mulligan for a one drop here. I don't know, though. It feels sketch. Like, keeping this feels sketch, but mulliganing down to six feels equally as sketch. I think it's pretty free to mulligan once, so I'm going to try it. We did hit the amulet that we were hoping for, and Explore definitely helps to smooth this hand over. Tracker returns as our threat of choice, of course. Do we keep the explosives or the dismember? I feel like we're more afraid in this hand of a Death Shadow than we are of an Angler, so I'm going to keep it and ship the dismember, as explosives will answer Shadow and Dismember probably, in most cases, will not. And we'll lead on the amulet here. We're keeping the windswept teeth in hand so that if we top deck bounce land, we could potentially play bounce land tracker on turn two and pick up the forest. And then turn three, play windswept teeth and get double clue trigger. I think that's reasonable. And then even explore into a third clue. So there, there's definitely a world where we don't want to crack windswept teeth. But I mean, now that we have to play it, we're definitely just cycling this explore, I think. Interesting that our opponent has shocked a breeding pool. This could represent Stubborn Denial for Explorer, and that would be pretty devastating, actually. We could play around Stubborn Denial and just play Explosives for one here. I really don't hate that. I think it's probably correct to fetch for Temple Garden here as well, since we have Path and the um, Eldarmi's Calls to draw into, rather than just two Talari West for the blue. So I am going to get Temple Garden. Kind of a toss-up here. I actually think Explosives on 1 is going to be the better play, just so our opponent can't cash in a Stubborn Denial. They could also just be holding up Thought Scour. But the problem is there's no way for us to know. If we just get this Explore Stub, then that's kind of a problem. But if we let them find a Black Source and take our Explore with Discard, that's bad too. Although I guess in that scenario, we're playing a Tracker, so... I don't feel great about it, but I'm going to play around the Stub and play Explosives on 1 and pass. And yes, I do know that it's potentially going to kill our own amulet, but I just don't want to get stubborn denied. That's the read I'm getting from this shocked breeding pool. At the very least. See if they have a thought scour. Oh, they didn't have it. Okay, so maybe our opponent was just representing stubborn denial. And now they just pass again. Okay. Hmm. We could play Explore here and still play around Stubborn Denial, but we wouldn't necessarily have a land drop for it. We could play Amulet as bait for something. I don't think that they would respond if we play this Amulet. We could play Amulet and just pass, and if we top deck any land, then we could play Tracker and have Windswept Teeth to crack at instant speed if they have removal. That doesn't sound too bad. We could also just pass. Any land lets us play Tracker and hold up Windswept Teeth to fetch. Amulet is a good thing to potentially discard to, say, a Croxa or something, or Colgan's Command. Mm, at the same time, if we play Amulet and top deck a Bounce Land, we can Cycle Explorer into a Titan and cast it. Ooh, but we also want to hold this Amulet in case we have to pop Explosives, I think. So we're either playing Explore here and passing... 
or we're just passing. I don't think we're playing tracker into this board. It's very strange, but I think we're just passing. Our opponent didn't play a discard spell last turn, which makes me think that they probably don't have it. So if they top deck it, then I guess we get punished for not playing tracker, but I think I'm just not playing anything here. They could also be holding a mana leak or like something like that. Something to think about, of course. I guess we don't want to yield here since uh, we might want to crack explosives or something if they were to point a Colgan's command at it and hope that we're F6. So we'll not play into that. All right, any land, any land. There we go. That's actually not a bad land either. So we play this, just play tracker, pass. We could play this, play amulet into tracker. Yeah. I think we're playing tracker first, probably just to see what happens, and then we'll decide what we want to do with our amulet, of course. But uh, this was kind of the scenario that we were hoping for, so. Pick up the garrison, of course. Play a tracker out. See what our opponent has. Now we can fetch, get a clue, and explore into garrison. And even still play the amulet, and then we'll have gotten two clues and been able to get something out of cycling this explorer. Which ain't too bad. If we do that, if we fetch right now, though, then our opponent can dismember our tracker and deny us of the card. So I think there's no reason to get too hasty here. Let's just play the patient game. Probably not attacking into our opponent's 16 points of life either. I don't want to enable uh, enable their Death Shadows. They play Fulminator Mage. Yikes, okay. I guess we could have played Amulet there and it would have been fine. They cycle Street Wraith, okay. Again, so, eh, now that they can get their life total below 13, it makes a little more sense to start attacking, but I also don't want their Shadow to just overwhelm us before we can get our advantage like, established here. We've got a great setup. We have, I guess, also, we have explosives for Shadow, so we don't really need to worry about Shadow too, too much, especially since we have an amulet we've saved in backup, so we can play it after we pop explosives onto, so eh, maybe, maybe we don't need to worry about attacking them down for setting up Shadow. If they, ha if they have double Shadow in hand, I suppose, then we'd have to worry about that, but This has been a very strange game to navigate. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm navigating this well or if I'm just getting lucky. As we did see our opponent mill over an Inquisition with their Thought Scour. If they had drawn that Inquisition, then maybe this tracker would never have existed. I mean, it would have existed, but probably just in our graveyard, you know? So if we play Garrison, float three with the forest and the Garrison, uh, play an amulet off of the non one of the non-green manas and play Explore, then we can play Garrison, float four mana off of it, and fetch for green source in order to have at least six mana, including two green for Titan. If we get a breeding pool, then we'll be able to float an extra green or blue or something like that. Or even like fetch for Temple Garden to float a white. So we have an avenue to cast Titan this upcoming turn if we want to. That require that would require us putting all of our eggs into that basket and uh, just ignoring tireless tracker value. Okay, they do go for a pulse. I mean, yeah, we're definitely fetching here. Losing marginal value on potentially allowing our Titan to search for a Val cut and the haste land here, but I think that's just what's going to have to happen. Getting the card is probably too valuable, and we can even crack the clue on their instep, so... Them tapping out for Pulse here is actually fantastic for us. I actually don't think that Pulse is a particularly good card for them to bring in. I mean, I get that it answers Titan and all, but they're trying to kill us before we get Titan and play um, Shadow. Okay. Interesting. Well, considering we can just Titan them this upcoming turn, I think it's going to be right to crack the clue here. And then if we don't find... Well, there's a Titan. Okay, well, I guess we're doing that, and our opponent is just dead. So let's make sure we do this right. We play Garrison. We leave two floating, play the amulet, cast explore with two floating, play garrison again, float six, leave the garrison and play, get Vesuva copy garrison, and Slayer's stronghold. Ooh, we don't have a lethal line here, though. 
actually. Let's say... Oh, wait, wait, Han. We don't have to... We can play Amulet now that we have a green bounce land. And then play Explorer and Garrison. So let's let's see if we do that first. We play Amulet. Play green bounce land. Explore, leaving two floating. Up to six. Cast Titan, leaving two open. Trigger gets... Valakut, perhaps? Let's see, we have... At that point, we would have... Two available. So if we got Bounce Land... No, we wouldn't be able to get Bounce Land until Ari West. Hmm. Let's see, so we have... Seven. Wait, we play Amulet. That leaves two. Sanctuary up to six. Explore down to four. Sanctuary again up to eight. Titan leaving two floating. Get... I guess... Valakut and Slayers would only be eight damage. We can pop Explosives. Even if we can't Sun Home. I think we can Sun Home for Double Strike, right? So, we leave two floating, get Valcut and Slayers, activate Temple Garden, leaving the Breeding Pool up, get... Ooh, no, we would have to have the Garrison in deck to be able to accomplish that. I guess we play Amulet, play Sanctuary, Explore, play Garrison, leave the Garrison in play, Vesuva copies the Garrison. So we can get uh, leave Breeding Pool up, Vesuva copying the Garrison, plus... Sun home. Yeah, we can double strike. We're also getting double amulet triggers, which I was neglecting. There's definitely a line for lethal here. Let's see, we have seven. No, we have six down to four up to eight Titan. We'd be one short of transmuting for a second Titan. Man. Let's say that we leave a garrison in play. Vesuva, the Garrison, and Slayer Stronghold double activate attack. No? That doesn't really do it either. I'm going to tell my opponent, there's a lethal line here. I just need to find it. Second Amulet and Garrison in hand. Ugh, I shouldn't be doing this so late. Um, we play the amulet. Sanctuary. Leave green-white floating. Explore. Garrison. Cast Titan leaving red-white floating. Get Vesuva Slayer Stronghold. I think that works. Six. Four. Eight. Leave red-white floating. Slayer Stronghold. Vesuva copying Garrison. Get Bounce land and... Sl yeah, okay. I think I found the line. So we play Amulet. And this... I'm trying to find a line that doesn't even involve the Dryad here. Okay, let's five to make sure we have no yield set. I apologize for boring you guys and our opponent to death. I think I figured out the right line, though. <laughs> That would be good for 16. I think we could probably pop explosives too, so our opponent blocking with shadow is not even a factor. These garrison get bounce land and sun home float. Three, untap both, pop explosives, double strike. Yeah, that's definitely lethal. Okay, so sanctuary. Five to make sure there's no yields. We'll untap. We'll untap. We'll pick up, I guess, just the forest. It doesn't really matter. We'll explore. Well, Garrison, the Azusa makes this much easier, actually. <laughs> that works, too. Um. <laughs> we'll do this. We'll pick up the breeding pool, I guess. Sure. We'll play the Titan leaving red and white floating. I'm just going to go with the original line I had thought through. We didn't need this Azusa anyways. <laughs> so, yes. 
we will get the Suva and Slayer Stronghold. Copy the Garrison. Because this list also doesn't play a Gruel Turf, interestingly enough. Okay, we can just let these amulet triggers go. We'll pick up the Temple Garden, I do suppose. Go to combat. Attack. Now the last thing to do is pop EE before our opponent has the chance to block. So Sun Home, and we'll just get a Simic. We stack this, and then the two Sun Homes. And then the Simics will untap one. We'll float and float, untap the Sun Home. Oh, hold on, untap the Simic, of course. Now we untap Sun Home. We double strike. We pop explosives on one. And opponent says good games. Whew! That, my friends, was a slog. All right. Oh, that was mind-boggling to me. Hopefully, you followed along my thought process at home. And uh, I guess you did get to see it all in action as well. So maybe that would have been more simple if I were not playing late at night. But uh, I have a busy life schedule. So I'm already just crunching to get this content out for you guys. And I hope that you appreciate it. And as a result, we are currently 3-0 with Reclaimer Amulet doing some work here. I definitely think that the sideboard explorers actually looked pretty good in this particular case. So, I don't know, maybe Jerry's still out on putting Explorer in the sideboard. We'll definitely find out, but that's a strike in favor if I do say so myself. And yeah, I will see you guys for the next round. This is Redface Menace, signing off.